I'd really like to thank uh, Premjam Memorial Trust, and in particular, Sandeep Ji for having me here. Uh, it's truly an honor uh, and privilege to be among such, you know, august speakers, and also some really excited students that I see here. Uh, not too long ago, I was on that side, so it's all the more exciting because I get to speak to you guys, you know. Of course, it's, it's not like a interactive session, but maybe, you know, after the speeches are done, I'd love to catch up with some of you to understand your motivations and what you want to do in the future. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the title of my presentation is Using a Public Policy Career to Build a Better Planet. Uh, now, what does a public policy career mean? So if you heard the introduction, I hope you paid attention. If not, just a quick recap. Uh, I'm an environmental engineer by training. I did a little bit of technical consultancy, which was primarily uh, environmental impact assessment modeling in the US. But two years ago, I had to come back because uh, there were issues with my work permit. And uh, I landed in India, not really knowing what I can do with my uh, vocation in environmental engineering, and in particular, air pollution control. And that's how I landed in the think tank space. Uh, I first worked with the Center for Science and Environment. Uh, some of you may have heard the name Center for Science and Environment, spearheaded basically, you know, transition of diesel vehicles to CNG vehicles in India way back in the early 2000s. So I was super excited by the prospect of, you know, being with an organization like that. I spent about a couple of years with the Center for Science and Environment and realized that I wanted to be with a younger organization, uh, an organization where I could ideate and actually build a program. And that's when I transitioned to the Council on Energy, Environment, and Water, where I'm at. Uh, we are about 12 years old. The one statistic that I really want to share about our organization is that the median age of our organization is still 30. So most of the people within the organization are still, you know, uh, close to 30 or in the early 30s. So it's a very young organization and I wanted to be a part of the family like that. But that's, a, uh, that's about me and how I kind of made it to the think tank space. But shifting gears to what my presentation is going to talk about, I thought I'll give you a glimpse into what a career in public policy really means. Kind of that's the zoomed out version. Zoom in into what a day in my life looks like as a public policy researcher what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and how is it that public policy institutions are trying to build a better world. So we've heard about technology, we heard about design from Ashiji. Another prospective career opportunity is being associated with a think tank or a policy research institution. All right, so just take a couple of quick minutes to read what's there on the slide, I mean. So actually, when I was putting together uh, the presentation, I thought, Kisko, relatable kaise bana sakte hai? And you know, I, I sort of dug through my email inbox and I found a cover letter that I had written for my grad school application. This is actually cover letter. So I put it very proudly here. I thought that I had written the cover letter in 2014 for my grad school application. For that, there will be a lot of development towards my perspective, you know, uh, to addressing issues pertaining to sustainability. But um, if you look at some of the points that I have here, you know, I've talked about how I was aware that, uh, you know, climate change is an inconvenient truth. It's an existential crisis. I had talked about, you know, how I was observing some smaller evils, whether it was overflowing garbage heaps in my colony, or dust from the nearby construction site, and how these were actually inspiring me to work towards a vocation where the planet could be cleaner. This was back in 2014. I worked, like I said, as an environmental consultant, which primarily worked towards assessing what was the environmental impact of construction sites, while of course construction was happening, and then during the operation of the project. I hear that some of you here are trying to build service telling me a kind of design for a sustainable building. You'll understand that air quality impacts of construction are also significant 
because of course during activities like excavation, building ka tootna, there's lots of dust that gets produced or even when you know within the unpaved roads inside the construction site, if there is a truck or an excavator or an JCB which is moving out, bohat dhool hoti hai. So construction activity in itself can also be very polluting and that was essentially what I was trying to quantify through my work in the US. And then I moved back to India and which is where I started delving into policy, right? Now what really is policy? Policy is an overarching framework. Aapne se kitne logo ne Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana ka naam suna hai? Anyone? So three people. I'll take like a quick 30 second break. Can someone tell me what PMUI is? What Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana is? Somebody, not without a mic, if you can just yell your answer. Okay. So Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana is a national level scheme which the government of India came up with to provide free LPG connections to people. Today in India, we are in 2023. We are aspiring to get to net zero by 2070. 30% of the air pollution that you see, right? Delhi NCR, super polluted, everyone knows. But across India, 30% of pollution comes from just Chulha. Just imagine, 30% of all pollution comes from Chulha. So to end this, the government goes ahead and subsidizes access to cleaner cooking fuel. Huge policy move, right? But the policy implemented in a, a policy intervention is only effective as long as it's implemented well. And this is what policy research is all about. So there is a policy which the government makes and then policy research institutions try and unpack the policy and see whether it's really having the kind of effect that it should. And that brings me to my next slide, that what does a career in public policy really mean? First big point, anticipating questions, not just reacting. All of us know that electric vehicles are the solution to India's pollution problem. But are we really thinking that what is the kind of load these electric vehicles will put on our power grid? Are we really thinking how, if the number of these vehicles increases, what is that going to do for traffic congestion in the cities? So while it's easy to react and say that, hey, yes, electric vehicles is the transformation we are looking for, and it's going to change the game for India, it's going to clean up India, but it's also important to anticipate what could be the other implications. And that's where public policy comes in. The second bit is making data credible. I would say 70% of my job is just this. So we, there was a question earlier, you know, in the quiz competition, 300 million tons of plastic? Was that, was that, where's the MC? Was that the question? 300 million tons of plastic in our ocean. How do we know that the data is credible? It's a valid question, right? Somebody comes and tells you a data point and you're gonna believe it? Somebody comes and tells you you're sick, you're gonna believe it? You're gonna go get a second opinion, right? So. Credibility of data, that's 70% of my work. If I'm going to walk into the office of a bureaucrat today, or if I'm going to walk into the office of the Delhi government and tell them that, Sir, aapke, aapke building ke bahar jo hai, wo sabse kharab hai, why will he believe me? He will only believe me when I can prove that my data is absolutely credible and it's unquestionable. So data credibility is a very important part of public policy work. And the third and most important, speaking truth to power. So unless and until what you're saying is backed by rigorous research, is backed by credible evidence, you cannot make an argument. Public policy research is all about generating credible evidence, research rigor, and then packing those things to create an argument, which of course has truth at the very center of it. Now this is a bit of a lofty slide. I will try and unpack it for you. That in the life of a public policy researcher, this is what a day entails, right? Your first step and the most important step is to conceptualize, is to identify whose problem are you solving? Am I solving my problem? Am I solving the government's problem? Am I solving your problem, right? How many of you have seen security guards, tea sellers, 
ठंड में वो जो भी कचरा होता है वो जला के ताप लेते हैं हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू सीन दैट जस्ट अ क्विक शो ऑफ हैंड्स इफ यू ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम लाइक दैट हुज प्रॉब्लम आर यू सॉल्विंग यू सॉल्विंग द पर्सन प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज यू आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड एन ऑल्टरनेटिव टू देर हीटिंग नीड्स यू आर ऑल्सो सॉल्विंग योर ओन प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज दैट इज इवेंचुअली ऑल्सो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन एयर पोल्यूशन सो द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज हुज प्रॉब्लम आर यू ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व फॉर द सेकेंड इज कंसेप्चुअलाइजिंग what is solving that problem going to entail right should i give the person some money ki nahi bhai aap oil heater khareed lo should i just tell the person nahi bhai aap jalao hi mat to bechara wo thand mein kya karega or should i tell the nearby residential uh, residential society ki nahi aap usko heater provide karaiye what is my theory of change how am i going to solve for that problem so conceptualizing the problem is very important conceptualizing and understanding goes hand in hand fourth convene again very important i may come up with a solution right sandeep ji and i are collaborating on a problem right now we are trying to solve for it but how do i know that my solution makes sense so i need to get the right set of people in the room to discuss the idea with them to get in their viewpoint on how the problem needs to be solved and then of course communicating I I create the solution, but there has to be a target audience for it, right? I have to take that solution to somebody, somebody who has the power to make a difference. I can only provide inputs as a public policy researcher, but it's either the government who is going to be the agent of change or an individual who is going to be the agent of change. Today, I'm coming to you with information on what public policy careers look like, hoping that in the future you might want to opt for a career in public policy. so you could become an agent of change but my job is to provide you information so communicating to the right audience and then finally of course you know taking a step back and reflecting ki bhai maine jo socha tha mera jo hypothesis tha did that work or did it not work so that is something that you know within cw within my organization is something that we call the arc of learning so when you've gone through these seven stages is when you truly know that you have delivered a policy research project from end to end on a very similar sort of landscape is what solving india's air pollution challenge looks like this is something that i do so i said 70% of my work is only ensuring that the data is credible so as you can see that's the first part of my day The first thing that I do, of course, you know, I drink a cup of coffee. I read the newspaper. How many of you need read the newspaper, by the way? This cracks me up all the time. Like you know, even in interviews, I ask people, "How many people read newspaper?" Nobody reads the newspaper anymore. How many people? This is something that we've really got to change. So, guys, moral of the story: please read the newspaper. But yes, so the first thing I do every single morning is I have a cup of coffee. I take the newspaper, and the next thing is. to look at the air quality data while i was on my way i took the metro from vasant vihar to okhla bird sanctuary the air quality index was 350 350 in the metro station aadmi andar rahe bahar rahe farak kya padega hawa to kharab hi hai but it's important for us to understand ki air quality kab achhi hai kis ki achhi hai kaun se time pe achhi hai kaun si jagah pe achhi hai so data making sense of what the data is telling us second solution hearing and this is what you know really makes sense right If you're going into a state office, you're not going to tell them that, sir, your city's air quality is very bad. You can't just do that. You have to give them solutions that make sense, which are feasible, which are cost-effective, which are scalable. So you have a solution. You run it through that matrix of cost-effectiveness, feasibility, and scalability, and then you put together a solution. The third part, and probably the most important. particularly in the global south you know india is a country in the global south which is implementation and governance and ma'am and i were talking about this in the, you know earlier today that policy to hai par uska implementation pata nahi hota hai ya nahi now let me ask one of you a quick question uh, how many of you know who is responsible for collecting waste from your house anyone from the students somebody raise your hand guys i'm not that boring an boring a speaker somebody who picks up waste from your house yes guy in the white sweatshirt i think you're smiling would you happen to know municipal corporation 
municipal corporation is responsible for collecting waste from your doorstep. So in policy research, it's very important for us to understand who is going to do what, which agency is to be held accountable, right? Think about this. You guys do group projects? Group projects up cut, right? Sab nahi kyunge group projects? Uh, agar group project mein delay ho jata hai aapka, who is held accountable? Right? All of you get held accountable. What do you think improves efficiency? One person being accountable or the entire group being accountable? But in government, things don't work that way. Accountability has to be fixed at one person. Delhi ki hawa kharaab hai. Should it be the Delhi government? Should it be the municipal corporation? Or should it be the government of Punjab? We can't flip-flop. So we need to figure out who really is going to make the change. So implementation and governance is super important. And finally, monitoring and evaluation. If you cannot evaluate whether your idea has changed the game or not, then it doesn't make sense. I made a smoke tower. I thought that if I put the air in traffic intersection, एक एयर प्यूरिफायर लगा दूं तो हवा एकदम चका चक हो जाएगी। But does that really happen? Who's going to monitor and evaluate? So that is the fourth and most critical part of the policy game. So that's my day, guys. Data, solutions, figuring out accountability, and then finally monitoring and evaluating. This was me, but this is what the think tank community is trying to do. This is the kind of future that we are trying to build. We've heard about net zero, right? As you can see, this is one of the transformations that we are aspiring for. We're trying to build a low carbon economy. Any low carbon transition cannot be outside the context of your entire economy. We were talking about G20 service, talking about sustainability with the G20 agenda. What is the biggest message that India has for the world today? Mission life. Lifestyles for a sustainable environment. That's our biggest message to the globe. So the low carbon conversation has become a very important part of the overall global development conversation. Second piece, of course, as you know, once these transformations happen, which includes your power markets, your industry is becoming sustainable, livelihoods becoming sustainable. Within CEW, we are running this venture called Powering Livelihoods. We are trying to understand how sustainable livelihoods can be scaled up across the country. We are supporting enterprises which are using solar-powered appliances to boost their production. That's the future. You invest in businesses of the future which are off dirty energy and relying on clean energy. That's the kind of transformation we are looking at. The second, how are these transformations linked to a good quality of life? And quality of life is not just clean air. It's not just clean water. It's clean air. It's clean water. It's how you move. It's what you eat. That's the kind of quality of life we are looking at. And finally, what's going to enable these transformations? Is it going to be international cooperation? Is it going to be flow of finance into a country, or is it going to be, you know, de-risking that finance? So figuring out what those enablers are. So this is how, this entire matrix is how we are trying to build a sustainable future. The last slide, I'm not going to read through it. This is just for you guys to quickly read. These are some of the marquee moments that we have tried to achieve for the country. But instead of looking at the black pointers here, look at the blue pointers. What is the key message here? Energy access for all. Energy cannot be cost prohibitive. Everybody should have access to clean energy. That's the policy problem to solve for. The second one, clean energy for clean future. We're all talking about, you know, the green hydrogen mission, which was just launched you know, a couple of weeks back. But what really is green hydrogen? It's clean energy for a clean future. We all heard about you know, the ozone depletion and then ban of HFCs and chlorofluorocarbons and so on. What is that? That is just kind of mitigating global warming. And then finally, and most importantly, the 2070 net zero target. That pathway is basically 
charting a path to a sustainable future. And all of these are important policy problems for public policy researchers to solve for. So I'll go back to my slide on the life of a public policy researcher. If you can anticipate questions, if you are happy working and sifting through, you know, bytes or gigabytes of data, and if you have the courage to speak truth to power, then you have it in you to be a public policy professional. And that's a wrap from my side. Thank you so much. Hope you took away something from this talk.